in this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to set up web push notifications on your website. Now, if you're unfamiliar with web push notifications, it's actually the message that gets sent to your browser directly because your browser on the web has its own unique address or also known as a hash ID. The way this experience works usually is you, once you go here, you're going to land on the page. I've programmed it to five seconds later, give me a prompt, right, which is almost there, right here. The moment I allow, it shows me a secondary prompt. This is a default browser behavior, so I can't really configure the messaging. I cannot do much here. This is why the pre-prompt was there. I'm going to show you how you can configure that. And once you allow, now you can send me directly to my browser awesome messages right here on the right side or on the top, depending on the browser itself. Okay, We'll cover in-depth browser push notifications within automation. However, this is just a video to show you how you can implement it. Now, the first thing you need to do is navigate to your settings from the top right. Click on website tracking code and you have to have your domain added and also you have to have it verified in this example i haven't verified the domain yet so you see the x in red here now when you click the drop down i'm going to come back to my domain settings and this is important because you have to have your browser push activated the way a browser push works it communicates through our tracker because our tracker is really powerful it sends all sorts of signals between vbout and your website visitors and other way around as well your website visitors and vbout so make sure this is activated right here and again the way i got to it is by clicking on the drop down domain settings and activating it from there once you do that i'm going to see two additional options this is the browser push settings and the analytics for the browser push on the browser push settings, this is telling me the first message that I just showed you on this page, right? How long before we display it? Give it a little bit of delay. I prefer to do something in the realm of 15 seconds, just so people build rapport with your content, right? Some some sort of a, an investment, because otherwise, if you simply blast it seconds in, a couple of seconds in, they probably don't even know who you are yet. You can show it to contacts or just anonymous. These are people who haven't filled out any forms yet. If they decline and they said no on that prompt, how long before you display it again? Do you want to do it on specific pages or on all pages? Some companies, they want to be aggressive and they just launch it on all pages. Others, they specify their content and certain pricing pages and so on. So it's really up to you. I think in the beginning phases, try to be a little bit aggressive and see how that works out. You can measure it day by day, and I've seen companies even do it hour by hour, but that's depending on the traffic, of course. The opt-in design, that's the prompt that I received before, and this is fully configurable from this view. You can change this copy to match your branding, allow, no thanks, and you can even add your own logo. This is where you can just go in here you can upload your own logo you can design on canva which is fully integrated or use any of our cool stock photos okay the defaults can be changed later this is just uh, to pre-populate some settings when you're starting to create these messages down the road if you fill this here it saves your time saves you time otherwise you can just override it later and this is the last part which is the most important you have to download the, our SDK and import it back to your website. I'm going to show you how. So our SDK is a very simple um, code. It's one line of code. All it does, it communicates with the service worker and it allows us to prompt that message. Okay. Don't get too much into the technology. It's one line of code file. It's called vbout dash sdk.js it's really important to maintain the structure don't change it modify it rename it it has to be the same exact okay now once you download it and save it locally you're either going to go to your back end if you have some sort of a file manager on wordpress 
uh, or you have some prompt to upload it. In my case, I'm just going to pull simple FTP. I have it right here. On the left side, I've downloaded it. On the right side, I have my repository on, on the website. So what I need to do is upload this one right here. If I do the second one, which has the bracket one, that's not going to work. Make sure you, again, upload it as it is. And that's it. Now that it's uploaded to your root directory, again, it has to be on the root directory. It cannot be in a subdomain, subfolder, or anywhere else. That's all that is required for you to activate your web push, and it should be pretty much good to go. Uh, of course, you can go ahead and test it once you do that. Verify that everything is working properly, and even send out messages to yourself. Now, you'll be able to see browser push analytics, how many people signed up. And one more thing, because some companies don't have the capability to upload these directly to their website, perhaps there's, there are some limitations. We allow you to activate them on landing pages. Once you go into your landing page on the right side, you're going to see the same exact prompt for browser push settings. The only difference is that here it's a lot easier. There's no upload involved, just one click of a button. The rest of the stuff is the exact same. And then once you click on the browser push analytics, you're going to see exactly the sign up. This is me because I just signed up and I can start sending messages to myself. Very simple.